it uh, went away. Thank goodness, man. Because yeah. like I was itching for a long time, and I, I just kept thinking, if I'm itching, how much worse must it must be? Andrew. Well, you would know. Yeah, because I'm the one itching you. You're itching him? Yeah, Bryce. What's your problem? We're trying to build a universe here. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> we're, we're I was expanding the fucking. This. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, uh, somebody we, dropped the F. <laughs> I work in a shoe store. We didn't. We didn't do this in improv practice. <laughs> Your hands turns out are we empty. want. To, turns out we want a pitcher and a belly itcher. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everybody, we're live now. We are uh, about to start the show in just a few minutes here. Hello everybody. Every now and then, it's not a lot, but I do get the dream where I, I'm in a play and I have lines and I don't know them and I don't have the script. <laughs> Uh, here. Like, I tend to get I tend to get dreams about uh, or I guess night nightmares unpleasant car dreams. Car crashes. You told us about your TikTok. No, I like those. Those I, I'll watch those. You like, I like Bryce watching likes them. Car crashes, everybody. Sorry. That was the warning sign. Uh, on a Discord server I was on, or is it still a man? Uh, it used to be a big deal whenever there was a um, a police chase, a, 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 like broadcast on a local news somewhere. And we stopped. We stopped making a big deal out of watching those pretty quickly because you just—it just so, takes one bad one. <laughs> I watched the O.J. Simpson chase at Miami Subs, which was this big sub sandwich place that they weren't really that good. Uh, with a black and white portable TV, my father had given that was powered by like C cell batteries. As my buddy and I were hanging out, we're watching this chase and we're hungry, so we take the TV with us because. You know, no World Wide Web or cell phones, whatever, with us in the car, go sit yeah. down at Miami Subs and put the big, this big, big, big block of a portable TV on the table to watch this thing. And? Did he get away? Um, Not guilty. Yeah. Not uh, guilty. Not guilty. It. Yeah. Gosh, man! You can't, uh, you can't see my bikini line anymore, can you? I got a bikini what? from the from the face mask from wearing a face mask on Saturday. <laughs> oh, you got oh you oh being my out, god! I hadn't even thought about sun. that. Yeah. yeah. Hold on, I can pull it up on Discord. It was uh... <laughs> that. That's how like the sheriff could catch like the stagecoach robbers, robbers and the bank robbers. You just walk into the saloon and look for everybody at the really pale part, be a little where the mask was. <laughs> Yeah, it it didn't it didn't hurt too too much. It wasn't it wasn't super bad, but uh, uh, your boy was in your boy was yeah. in Cancun. Uh oh, <laughs> oh. cheeks out in Cancun. I'll tell you what cheeks gets out. you is just like uh like there's no there's no being four to five hours out in the sun where it's like you don't want to go to bed at four in the afternoon. Like 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 there's something about that where it's like. Uh, like, like Bonnie's like, is everything okay? I'm like, I, I, I went fishing, Bonnie. I, I want to go to bed right now. It's, it's, it's three. Yeah, I know. That's exactly when I want to go to bed. Siesta, okay. man. Yeah, you just Siesta. A little nap. Yeah, no, yeah. You sell it as European. You're like that. You're enlightened. Mm -hmm. You, know? you have like, a big lunch. Exactly. Yeah. This is, well, yeah. It's, I'm just. I'm in a very European phase right now, Bon. Like, so I. I just. Uh, I gotta. I gotta go to. I gotta go to sleep at three. And I'll Stop be up a little being bit later. So American. Yeah. Oh my God. So, two thousand and late. It's always a good move to make <laughs> against your your loved one is to is to put them on de defensive and say, yeah. Yo, why are you? So blank. It's a, they love it. They love it, man. It's like sets their world on fire. And by that, I mean your world where it's literally on fire. <laughs> All right. Got our recordings going. You guys want to start a show? Ready, ready. Let's go. All right. Andrew, I'll count you in. In three, two.
Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Mr. Brian Brushwood. I refuse to believe that another week has passed. What is happening? Time travel. Mr. Justin Robert Young. Hello, friends. Bryce Castillo. As an investor in calendars, I want to assure everyone that time is moving at its normal speed. Yeah, I disagree. I, <laughs> Stop the count. I'm, Stop the count. <laughs> Stop the count. I measure time by Brian's luscious locks pouring over his collar. Oh, mm. yeah. He's got the mm. ponytail now. Sorry. Yeah, He's rocking a real oh, yeah. oh, oh, there it is. Okay, we're all caught up. Oh, it's... yeah. That's definitely mm. go visit my girlfriend, and there's her English professor answering the door. Oh, oh no. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. oh, hello, Andrew. <laughs> D- uh, uh, were you looking for Gertrude? Ah, uh, we were in the middle yeah. of something. Uh. Yeah. Oh, my God. What's going on? And then he gently puts a hand on my shoulder, presses my chest, and says, Let's talk. And two really hands. Oh, out. two hands. That's too yeah. much content. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Just... Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And then maybe, uh, maybe to punctuate it, he just like, like a very brief forehead to forehead touch. Oh. Like, like, like he's like bowing into it. Like, like, yes, we're sharing a moment. But, but, <sighs> but like couched as though this is a traditional, totally normal thing where it's like a. Yeah. Uh, like a, a, you're. You've convinced yes, yourself yeah. that it's just an energy thing, but the reality is it's a dominance thing. Like, yo, oh, yeah, oh, a hundred percent, yeah, no, they, like, it, like you're like, like, hey, look, like, you know, life's got its ebbs and and valleys, and uh, we're all just here together on this rock, and and you, like you do it, but also you're you're just like, oh yeah, no, I, I, me and Gertrude just, you know, to town, like in a way that's vile. Yeah. <laughs> It, it's already been vile so far. <laughs> feel yeah. like we no. solved a lot of problems. <laughs> at this point, I now. really I, feel like I, we did I, a lot of good. Congrats! At this point, I really <laughs> just I just want to creep out Bryce to like a real like. Uh, uh, <laughs> I've been very aggressive in, in you know I'm working on a project where I, I'm trying to go for a very specific gross kind of tone, and so I've thought a lot about just like how do you aggressively try to like uh, initiate a certain feeling in in people yeah and so now i'm just trying to torture bryce a big piece of the bryce puzzle was revealed (laughs) right before the show we're talking about tiktok and he's like i like to watch dash cam videos of car accidents well like holy cow it's i don't i don't want anyone to be hurt but uh, through the filter of tiktok they don't put anything gruesome on there because they don't want their account to right. go away. Uh, I mean, are you sure? That's are you sure that maybe if you if you were to just hold on like and not swipe maybe a half second more? Have you thought about like like that you might be on the hair trigger of that algorithm where they're pushing some for real for real blood just and guts? Throwing this out there, maybe there's a reason that their theme song is America, America, this is you. And then that's like code for it's going to be fine. No? America's no. Funniest Home Videos. Yeah. No. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Fine. I, I, just, it's, <laughs> I, I know I don't love it. I especially don't love it because I know that the, the, one of the popular channels is always like, you want to buy a dash cam? Go to the link. You know, it's all promoting their, their crappy little cameras. Uh, but, you know, seeing near misses, it's a lot of like near misses and like, oh, someone's turning and they shouldn't have turned or whatever. Uh, I don't know. It's a, it's a little. Are they all? Are, 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 it's a are they all still Russian, or or have we have we gotten more in in the American, or is there another there's, emerging market for dash cam videos? There, uh, it, it's not all Russian. In fact, there's there's a lot of American stuff, uh, but the quality has not has not really improved. It it still kind of got that look, and I don't know if that's just a function of it's got to work, you know, in outdoors lighting. Lighting's got always changing, turning. Oh on, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, we we went peak Russian dash cam with the meteor. That sure. was the best, right? Yeah. That was the best. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah. I want to start with a. Uh, this is an obituary about Alan McDonald, who just passed away, and the name may be familiar to some. Alan McDonald was in a very very difficult position. He worked for Morton Thiokol, and he was one of the 
with a group of engineers that they had to sign off and say, is the shuttle ready? Can we fly the shuttle today? Are the conditions right? And he was asked uh, to go sign off uh, back in the 1980s. Should it fly? And he said, no, the temperature has been too low. We should not fly. And he and his other engineers agreed the shuttle should not fly because they're worried about the O-ring seals. Well, Whoa. Uh, NASA pressured Morton Thiokol said, no, we need this launch to go off. It's really got to go. Went back to the team. They're like, no, we will not. We won't sign this off today. This is just the temperature's too low. We won't do this. Morton Thiokol then went overruled them, and they signed off basically under pressure from NASA. said, yes, we think the shuttle is fine to fly. And the Challenger shuttle flew, and because of the O-ring failure, it blew up. And Alan was wow. one of these people that stood up, said no. And then there was a hearing. There was a hearing on this where... Uh, basically, they were talking to some Morton Thiokol, you know, about this, and he stood up and said, right there, said, I, you know, we refuse to sign off on this, made his voice heard, and it came out right then and there that the engineers at Morton Thiokol had actually said no, because there was a bit of a attempted cover-up. They tried to cover this up, and he stood up in a hearing to say, this is what happened, and we otherwise maybe wouldn't have known that was the case, and that was when, you know, one of the ways the story first started to get out. Because uh, Congress decided to make sure that they couldn't go uh, do retribution against him, they prevented Morton Thiokol from being punitive against him in any overt way, so he stayed with them for a number of years. But he since went on to become a lecturer about ethics, about speaking to your conscience. Even though people pressure you and say you need to do a thing, he stood very much about you need to stand your ground if what's right. Because his 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 logic is like, would if I if I said yes— and something bad happened, I would regret it for the rest of my life. If I said no, you know, and maybe everything was fine, that's fine. It's easier to live with than that. That's crazy. I, I and and it shows my ignorance on the challenger, but uh, I didn't know that there was anything like that involved in 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 the challenger. I I, I was I was not aware that there was any any kind of uh, nascent cover up or or otherwise. Well, uh NASA 1980s uh, very much tried to do their best to because th it literally was there was pressure they wanted to fly this thing, and that was part of the uh, that was part of the problem. And even then, it never got a lot of attention was made about it. The fact that they overruled the engineers, the engineers themselves said no, it should not fly, and NASA sort of wanted to essentially cover this up, and they did what they could to sort of work their way around the story within the powers they had, and almost succeeded. Wow. So. Uh this, this is the main subject of uh, Final Flight, uh, the Netflix documentary. Um, and, and there's sort of the, man, I don't even know how to feel about it. Like, like there's a dude at the end of it that flat out says, yes, flying to space is very dangerous. And even knowing all of the risks, even knowing this kind of thing could happen, that's what makes these people heroes and we should not stop ourselves from going for it. Um, bold bold but, take in, in a Netflix documentary. Yeah. And it's, it, but it's also, and I, I don't know enough about that person's story. I know who that is and I don't know enough to speak to them, but in general, I'll say the thing is when the engineers who built the thing are like, no, don't fly it. And you have to overrule the engineers and go to the managers to get the sign off to fly it. That's a mistake. That's what, a what was what 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 was the time sensitivity there? Like was like the day was, before? Because yeah, well, I mean, I, I, like what, what were, were they protecting the launch because they they needed it to go b before a certain time? Like I guess, and and this is probably because I grew up in a post Challenger world, so maybe these things, the the idea of this will launch on this day, more of a military precision. Uh, was was part of the culture then, but but in in the world of space travel now, even unmanned stuff, uh, you just are like, well, you know, the 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 it's too humid, it's two degrees more humid than we want it to be, so let's just kick it down the road for another week or so. Uh, this is a, a very brief plug for a, a, a Final Flight, the the documentary that's on Netflix. Uh, as I remember it, there were two mitigating factors. One was they needed to continue to present the idea that this was, 
you know, closer and closer to a, 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 an, an airplane launch where it's like, it's no big deal. Do it, do it, do it again. Uh, on top of this, we had the fact that there it was going to be a civilian on the flight and, and, and so on. And all of that. Um, and then the, the one negative thing, a uh, very powerful negative thing to be clear, uh, was, uh, w was, well, the O-rings, uh, maybe they get a little brittle when it gets cold. Uh, the, and the evaluation internally was, well, we've already had it such that one of them failed and the other one covered for it. So seems to me like we've already had a worst case scenario. Why not go again? And, and, and again, that's not me defending them so much as mm -hmm. representing well, as that, best I understand it. Yeah, and I, I think the problem it, it here was that in, you have NASA, you have Morton Thiokol as far as the management structure, and then you had the engineers. And I don't know enough to know, had there ever been a case where the engineers were like, no, but when you're in, your engineers are like universally like, no, do not fly this. The people who made it, who understand this the best, and the head of that group is like, no, do not fly it. And people who don't know the engineering, don't know this, saying, no, 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 we think we're good to go because of their pressure. Like we said, the regularity, the idea to show how often it could frequently fly. I would say that's a big problem because it's like, it's, uh, you know, we, we have this problem where, you know, we go through a health crisis right now where we listen to the person who's head of the agency, but then we find other people in the field are saying, no, this is the case. And the other people thought like, no, 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 I know this. And they're like, well, do you? And it gets to be problematic. And here, like, I'm not aware of a case where you had a revel, you know, a you know, like a revolt where the engineers refused to sign off like this. Maybe it's happened before, but that was really what stood out. And then the, afterwards, the downplay was just the downplay. Like, oh, we have to make a decision like this. Well, were these managers making decisions, or were these the engineers who made the thing telling you? Yeah, yeah, and 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 I guess that's uh, uh, there, there's there's a tremendous benefit in normalizing the concept of ah, we'll do it next week. Like we'll do it in a month. Like that we, we, we would rather not the nationally scarring event that that happened with with Challenger. That that is the the number one thing we totally want to avoid because implicitly on the other side of a decision to be to overvalue the window of time to launch versus you know uh, internal engineering stuff is the idea that no the the, the timing matters the, like that matters more than a, 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 a possible fallout of of what happens if something goes wrong there there is some amount of that that is transparent in the netflix documentary where they talk about like um uh, uh there's a big difference between them doing it on a sunday versus on a monday mm -hmm. uh, a school day versus over the weekend and so on and so it's like and in fact they do push over the sunday but they find themselves you know at this monday where it's like okay we know all the teachers are pulling in the the CRT monitors and getting ready to do it. I mean, it's, it's awful. It's, it's, there's Worst nothing good about it. Worst school assembly I ever went to. I, I, I agreed, agreed. And, and uh, to the credit of the documentary, they're very, coy is not the right word. They're, they're, they're very gentle around, around that, that moment. Yeah. I, it's, it's such a complicated thing. And you touched upon this too, Brian, whether it was just that, you know, that this was a program where we look at the start of the shuttle program in the late sixties, early seventies of this fully reusable, the idea of a fully reusable uh, space platform that was going to use completely liquid propell propellants. And then the compromises made along the way, part of the problem with the shuttle design was a solid rocket boosters was because of the pork barrel politics they had to be made in one state and then shipped via rail car to, uh, to Florida and then assembled instead of being welded and having the fuel put into it that way. These things were built in a way that was designed to make them stick all of these compromises. And then you get to the point of the launch pad and you look at like all these bad engineering choices that were made along the way. And it, it's, it sucks. It just sucks. Like, I don't know how, you know, we see that now with SLS where this has been pushed back again and again and we may get scrapped entirely now. And there's a temptation to simplify things into a good guy and bad guy duality. 
and 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 I think that does no service to anybody. Um, man, I, I I can't recommend this documentary highly enough because it's like uh, above everything. Yes, you see all of the difficulties of the moment, but most importantly, you you see humans that that went up in the in 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 that experience. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I I think it's it's fascinating now as we as we legitimately get to a time where we're becoming bored with uh, rockets going up and doing increasingly complex things. Uh, you know, it, the 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 feeling that they wanted to establish with making sure that this thing was a regular uh, experience is kind of here now. Oh, so many years later, and 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 Lord knows how much longer it took because of this nationally scarring event uh, with, with the challenger. But it's so interesting to kind of just look at this as like a writ large process experiment of like, all right, let's say you want to get to a goal and this is a, about as big of a goal. I mean, normalizing the concept of an earthbound species to understand that people go to space all the time is, is a massive cultural shift. Uh, how do you do it? What are the building blocks that need to happen, uh, uh, you know, to to make that a a reality? And I think the closest thing that you could say now, from our perspective, is just people doing it all the time, and therefore us saying, "Well, how far am I from doing that? Like, where is where is my pathway to space if if one exists? Like, that's what makes us comfortable on it. And God knows when." you know, especially for you guys, you guys were young, you know, watching that literally in school, a, a, a childhood traumatic experience is probably not the way that you want to contextualize where, where am I in, 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 in the, in the line of who goes to space and how I feel about it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it certainly seems like there were lessons. Well, we say there was lessons learned and then we had, a, you know, the other shuttle blow up. That was part of the problem too, was then, and then you kind of dig into, NASA, like, oh, there's nothing we could do. And you dig in furthermore and you find out like, no, you just found a different way to ignore problems and sort of push blame aside. And then with the SLS, there certainly is perhaps now, uh, there's a tremendous amount of caution, which is good, but still the process by which they were building this thing. It's just a complete disaster of a project where, like, you know, let's use all the elements for the super successful shuttle program for a new rocket, because that wasn't problematic. And, yeah, right. Well, we had problems, so we have to have this whole new layer of testing, and we're going to use the same engines, but we're going to completely rebuild them with sensors. But they're, it's just, uh, sorry. Um, yeah, well, well but, it, it's 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 doubly tough because um, there's there's the reality of 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 the, the challenges that you know the whole program has gone through, but then doubled on that is the reality of like spiritually do I want to allow brave, crazy people to, to really go for it and know that there's a one in a hundred chance that they'll blow up halfway on their way. And, and, and libertarian in me wants to, wants to give them a chance, but also is aware that, that, that that's partly my support is a, uh, is, 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 is an, an encouragement of, of, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I don't have a problem. The risk taking, I think we're all on board for. I think the frustrating thing with Challenger was the cover up and was the fact that we were misled. We were misled about what happened. We we're, oh, we didn't know. And like, no, turns out you tried to silence a group of people that told you this was problematic. And these were people who would know. So there's something wrong with that. Pro it's, it's unnecessary risk. You know, the idea like this thing is risky enough for getting O rings, you've got meteors and other sort of stuff. And then we find out you know, tile vulnerability and this stuff. I think that's sort of the issue is like the risk is there. The problem is the bureaucracy that tries to cover that up. And, and some of these problems were kind of bureaucratic problems. Like it was and sort of a bureau. I, 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 I suppose this is the part that I wrestle the most with is if I, if, if I think real hard in the abstract and I, and I pull myself away from the actual tragedy that happened there's some part of me that might be able to justify the terrible 
decisions that the bureaucracy made uh, in 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 that 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 way that um uh oh a, a few good men does where it's like hey like it or not people like me you know our wake up every morning we make sure that you know the the reds don't invade us or whatever um like like i i i don't know that i have a strong answer for that but but i do know that even asking the question is uncomfortable well i would i would put it this way though it, it, like i said it's one thing to say there're always going to be these unknown risks it's another thing when you know, hey, we got to send a bunch of soldiers overseas to fight. Okay, that's difficult. By the way, we only have rubber bullets. We're going to give them rubber bullets. Well, rubber bullets aren't going to work. Ah, it's the spirit. We got to send them to fight. And here the problem was, like, there was a process. There was a process to say, is it safe or not? And they wanted to maintain the illusion that this thing could launch all around, could launch on a regular basis, which it couldn't. They wanted to say, no, we could. This is why you give us the money, and this is why you need to keep funding us is because it can do this. And the engineers are like, no, no, it can't. It really can't. We oversold the goods. We can't do this thing. And they're like, well, we'll take that chance because we need to maintain the illusion. And then it blows up. And the engineer's like, yeah, we told you. And it's like, yeah, but I guess that's my issue is the sort of thing where there's these, the risks you don't know, but then the people you go to and tell me, should I do this or not? And they're like, no. And you're like, nope, doing it anyway. And they're like, why? What, what, what rational argument was there? I think yeah that that's that's something where you are committed to this big picture idea where you don't realize that the the foundation you believe you are trying to advance has eroded under your feet like like that that is you know there's there is that line between I'm a big picture thinker we got to go forward even if we think we're not ready we're going to push boundaries uh, uh, and I think you've seen this obviously in, in some of our, you know, tech companies and stuff like that. The like, you know, fail fast, you know, the, 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 that's kind of like a lionized thing. It's not as great when you're talking about human lives and the concept of space travel in a, a government run program as, as, as we've seen, if you are ignoring your better, you know, the, the, there is a line between being somebody who wants to be aggressive and being foolhardy. And I guess that really is the test of leadership. The, the test of leadership is finding that. You know, it's neither aggressive nor foolhardy. That is supporting the weird things podcast. Hell yeah, Andrew. Patreon.com slash weird things. Get on over there right now. You support us. You, you, you get a, uh, you get access to our after things uh, podcast before anybody else. It's a great time. Patreon.com slash weird things. Gentlemen, in the spirit of talking about space and trying things, did you guys get to watch SN10? That is Starship Serial number 10. I, 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 this is the one that almost made it, like 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 it did in like 99%. And forgive me the background, whatever. That's us. Uh, we're building a spaceship. I didn't want to make a big deal about it. <laughs> we're about to fly to the moon. It's fine. But if I understand correctly, SLS to, or, or whatever the latest generation is, like it full on landed and then whoopsie doodle exploded. What what happened? It was it was so it went to it, it took off. It went to ten kilometers. They wanted to test this maneuver. They wanted to test the reentry maneuver and have it land, which it did. A little bit of a hard landing, but it fully landed. It did everything it was supposed to do within that profile. They watch the SpaceX podcast. They're like, it's sitting there in the pad, like, oh, and there you go. You know, this will conclude the SpaceX podcast. Podcast or stream ends. Two or three minutes later, like you watch everyday astronaut, they're wrapping up like, yay, it did it. This is great. Blah, blah, blah. Boom. <laughs> it blows up. <laughs> it's a, a sense of comedic timing. So, so in this case, like everything worked pretty much 100%. Did have have they spoken yet out loud about like why you know whoopsie doodle it blew up? Uh they're looking. There were some deals with like engine pressure, or some other issues there that they were trying to deal with. So, and you can see there's a lot of fire coming off of that that uh, one of the engines right there. So, it's the beautiful thing about the process they're doing is this is I'm gonna the the amazing thing is like so we watch this thing land and then we watched it blow up 
And right now, SN11 is being wheeled to the launch pad. Yeah. That this the is next they, one. they are yeah, they are they are already like uh, uh ready to rock and roll. Uh here's here's our next uh, our next version and and the incremental progress that they're making is you know, uh uh something special, something something truly unique uh uh including the idea of like boy as they go through this process of trying to land bigger and bigger rockets, does it just give us a, a, a such a feast of explosion videos? <laughs> like, because we saw this when they were first doing the landings on on the drone ships and stuff like that. We just got these insane explosion videos, and this has given us three now. But again, it's it's each and every step brings us closer, and and uh, you know, for for the SpaceX podcast. Uh, you know, as far as anybody knows, it it landed. Now you watch other video and you can see <laughs> one of the most spectacular explosions that you have have ever seen in your entire life. But that's what this process looks like. And I guess to, to go back to what we were talking before of people understanding, well, where are we in space and and how close am I or somebody I know to going there? oddly think that this stuff brings us closer than just pretending that everything's fine or if SpaceX imagine the SpaceX we were we would be in some world where they could control their messages uh and and they wouldn't show these explosions I, I almost feel like this is this entrusts me to the process more because I can watch them uh uh fail and iterate and fail and iterate and fail and iterate yeah well, and that's the Brian, please. Oh, I, I, I was maybe I'm maybe taking us on a side jag here, but 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 what what was the uh, newsprint article that's like, hey, what are we doing even trying to go to Mars? That's dumb. Why are we doing that? And and I know that 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 all three slash probably four of us like are in general in favor of going to Mars or whatever. But but I want to give equal time to like to the best of our understanding. I would love for somebody to make the case of why it's a silly waste of time to try to land and terraform a chunk of Mars when, when meanwhile our own home is in peril. Well, let, let, let's, let's, let's define this because I think that the fastest way for this to get into a tailspin is, is to have it be uh, without boundaries. So are we talking about, from the point of view of a company, from the global idea of us as a society or, or us as a government? Where, where do we want to frame this argument to go forward? I wish I knew the exact... There was Atl it was the Atlantic. The Atlantic. And there you go. Thank you. Yeah, that was one. And there was another... Same author wrote like two articles about it and then came... I, 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 I think it's fair game to question everything. And that, that's the first... Like I think it's totally fair game to question why, why this. And, and my... And I get on Twitter every time I'd say, hey, look at cool. I get the person, you know, I got, I got a person like, hey, Dallas, kids in school in Dallas don't have access to water when I talked about what was going on with the Mars Perseverance. And I'm like, I don't know how that's connected to this. But, you know, I will tell you that, you know, that for twice that we spend $5 billion a year on the James Johnson Space Center in Texas, which there's money going to Texas for this. If it's a matter of, is it, there's money like, what do we want to spend our money on? And and a lot of the problems we talk about, people think, oh, we're just not spending enough money like on education. It's like we spend more capita per capita on our students than any other country in the world. Probably spending more money on education per dollar is not going to give us the return that people think. The problem might be elsewhere. And people have this weird, they'll they'll get fixated, like, oh, we're spending money on this. It's like, great, let's talk about the 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 30, you know, the J35, the Y35 jet program. What? I don't know what that is. Let's talk about the Navy literal ships that we found out that aren't going to work in the way we want. And the billions of dollars have been wasted there. People don't know about like, let's talk about the, you know, the $10 billion that California gave out in fraudulent, you know, COVID claims. People aren't aware of these things. They don't know and they don't even care. And it's often just like, I don't like the idea that you're doing this. So I'm going to use this as a reason to tell you why. And it's like on the list of all the stupid things we spend money on. Mm, where does this rank? Um. Yeah, doggone it. I, I feel like there's a strong probability that 
among the four of us, none of us are going to have a really good counter car argument. I feel like we're all well, on team go to Mars. <laughs> well, well, I mean, the, I, I, again, I think that there's, there's, there are specific arguments you can make if we put a, a corral around the argument, right? There, there is uh, a, an argument for governmental allocation if you are saying, okay, well, the government's going to put in this amount of money. There's a, a, an argument from SpaceX where it's like, okay, well, it, before you think about, you're overreaching by trying to send something to Mars or having a rocket that could go to Mars, you should try to do more in in near orbit or or, or something else, right? Uh, there's a societal argument of we should not focus on this and, and we should not lionize this. We should focus on more near-term goals as opposed to believing in this idea that is, even at its most optimistic, is a far-flung uh, perspective. You can he make those here's my when i hear the we thing and i hear the thing that frustrates me about this is like i hear oh we should do this like okay so you're telling everybody every engineer that wants to work in aerospace they're in the wrong field that they should go work in this other field and it's frustrating because i'm like i'm watching listen to a writer telling you guys should go do this like why don't you why don't you do it like why don't you you're telling other people like no i want to work in space elon musk is like i want to work on space development I'm like no you must do the thing that I think is important, but I don't really spend that much time working on. And I prefer to just tell other people what to do. That sort of thing that's sort of frustrating to me is just like, it's like, like, I feel like, I think people are involved in, let's say climate change issues, whatever. I'm like, man, go get engineering degrees, come up with the tech to solve this stuff. Like, I, I think that and like, you can only spend so much time raising awareness. To, let's build stuff. To be fair. I am definitely aware that, uh, if if what you want is for people to click on your your article, then there are certainly bombastic headlines that you absolutely must go with. Those are the best practices and so on. But in this case, we have a bombastic headline that is like Mars is a hellhole. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, we should we should take care of Earth first. And it's like if what you're saying is we should tend to our own garden, period. Yes, 100%. If you're saying, I think it's more important that we tend to our own garden than go out and find another garden, you could talk me into that. But the idea that it's like, you shouldn't even be trying to build another garden until we've gotten our garden perfected, that's where, that's where we break apart. Well, it, I, I, two things. One is, yeah, imagine if Elon Musk spent less time on SpaceX and tried to create like an electric car company or maybe a solar company. Maybe he should do that. And oh, wait, he did do that. Um, mm. Okay. Uh, all right. But that's the beside the point. It's like, that's part of my argument. Like this guy's already trying to solve these other problems that we talk about. And one of the things that happens too is that you don't know, what, we need new challenges. We really need new challenges. Like, and we have, we have big challenges in front of us, but some of the wet times you find new solutions is if you're going to try to figure out how to make a sustainable colony on another planet, we're going to learn a lot about sustainability on Earth. We're going to be building systems and technologies that hopefully will be have a lot. Every time you try to figure out how to put humans into different environments, you learn a lot. We learned a lot about air scrubbers and things like this by putting astronauts into space stations and spacecraft. We learn a lot about filtration systems. There's so many there's the there's the PR propaganda sort of PR you know spin out stuff that happens, but then there's like the legit stuff. When you get enough engineers solving problems and building materials and tools, there are benefits. And there's nothing like working on things like space exploration is a very exciting thing. I would say that a lot of the problems that we're trying to solve right now aren't getting solved because they're not as exciting. And you can yell at people all you want and shake your finger, but you know the people doing that the most. I'm like, go get engineering degrees. Like, well, like. My God, we would I, be benefit tremendously. I, I I wonder if there's not something to the idea, and I'm just exploring the space here. Apologies if I step on a toe, but but like, there are people who I know and respect who genuinely cannot comprehend why somebody would want to risk their life to go die on a barren rock, millions of miles away from home, um, and 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 to me. The answer is simple. It's like, well, you don't have to understand why they do it. You just have to appreciate it because there is, and there seems to have been millennia after millennia 
some amount of this pioneer spirit that causes us to want to go take insane risks and try to move to where we where we do not belong and and the big question is is that something you celebrate or not and to me it's automatically something to celebrate but i i I, i'm certainly listening if somebody wants to explain to me why it's not well yeah. I guess is 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 the idea that we are gatekeeping on somebody's ability to make the 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 decision, or are we arguing about the resources allocated to allow them to make that decision? Is ridiculous. Well, especially when when we're using taxable income, you know, like 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 uh, as libertarians might say, you know, a, a, a collection of income at the point of a barrel of a gun or whatever. Sure, like, like yeah. that does change things. Well, I mean, yeah, I think that that that's. I mean, if there's one thing that I think we can say about our modern culture is that there is an emphasis on understanding the things that you might not inherently understand. Like, like that that is that is a a cultural moment for which we are having and reckoning with and fighting against every day. It's it's essentially the kind of like part of the beating heart of the culture war. Would uh, would would it be fair? Let me just float this out here, and Bryce, you can correct me here. Would it be fair for me to, uh, my analysis is, I feel like uh, Andrew and Justin and Brian, the three of us are sort of like um, reflexive, kind of dogmatically like, yeah, do the crazy thing, go go nuts or whatever. Whereas I, I, I've, I've had the sense over the last, you know, half decade that, that you are maybe the most pragmatic of all of us. Um, is, is, is there anything about what we're talking about here that, that tickles, uh, a, yeah, maybe that doesn't make sense or I don't know. I'd like, I'd, I'd like to hear, uh, your perspective. Um, uh, uh, okay. Big topic. Um, uh, uh, no uh, pressure, no pressure. <laughs> Whatever you do, Bryce. I'm being positioned about... as the as the straw man in no, this argument. No, <laughs> you're not. You're not. You're not a straw that, man. We all have uh, very clearly defined positions. <laughs> Some of them have been built over ten years. So now attack them. <laughs> attack them as hard as you can. If, 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 no, no, no. Don't for, be talking. I mean, I, for what it's worth, my uh, point was putting us as the straw man, <laughs> where it's like, like, like we're doing the same thing. Let the boy talk. Like, Let him okay. talk. We're old the, calcified. Let opinions. him talk. Oh, Let him opinion. talk. Uh, uh, I think I think it, it makes sense to uh, to look at a very long uh, you know a very long term uh, um, approach to you know humanity and to life to civil to civilization to um, you know just general consciousness. I think it would be uh, probably prudent to start looking at hey what would it look like to terraform and make livable life on other planets especially kind of looking again on the long term at the state uh, of earth um i think that all makes sense and and you know you have to kind of start with well how do we get there how do we get stuff to and from there right uh the you know if it, it it's like building roads right you can't you have to have roads and paths before you can really start saying where all the important places are um so i, I think that all makes sense as far as like public funds i i don't know right a lot of this is is spacex doing it and where is that money coming from maybe contracts i i don't know enough about the the actual money element to say what is and isn't uh um isn't isn't there i know it you would not Bryce doesn't sully his hands with money uh but it, it and and i think because this process of kind of figuring out well how do we get there and how do we get back um I think there. I think we don't talk enough about what it looks like. I know Mar. I know Musk has has mentioned you know terraforming Mars and the little picture of the green, the green Mars, um, you know, planet uh, photos and all. Uh, I kind of wish there was a little more of that to let everyone know, like, hey, this is a very long window of time that we're covering here. We're we're talking about. I mean, I, I, I couldn't even put a, a good number, hundreds, tens, hundreds of years, ultimately, about moving, having a living uh, civilization that isn't just people sent out to die on Mars. Like, I, I, I don't who knows how long that is. But but right now, it's a, it's all about the kind of right now we're in the, the uh, you, you ever see the old the old those old infomercials from the 90s, the big trucks commercial. Oh, here's videos of the big trucks and all the big machines. And that's kind of where we're at right now with some of the space stuff where it would be good. 
<laughs> if we also had then a moment. <laughs> you can hear them right now. That's it. They're doing space all right, stuff all right, right hold now. On, hold on, no hold explanation. Hold on. No Marcus, explanation. Those are just I, the big trucks. The this big is how trucks good our here. Foley work is. Keep going. I just, I just love the idea that this is the, the work that's being done there is just. It's getting more cartoonish where it's just like they're just going to be the big saw like uh, 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 and then like a jackhammer and somebody's drive beep, beep, beep. <laughs> just every every element of foley work for construction is just eventually going to make its way out. The metal plate doing thunder sounds. Yeah. And then and then like just stuff that doesn't make sense like like the the the, the thing that gets lug nuts off cars like but I wish so. I wish there was a more, a little bit more of, of reminding people. Hey, this is the vision. Ultimately, we're trying to look at not just going to this hellhole, which it is right now. Hamar's the hellhole. No one can live there. But uh, how do we make it livable? How do we make, uh, you know, places that are livable? How do we make the environment livable? The atmosphere? What can we do? Well, we can't even begin to work on that until we actually can get stuff up there. And and I think, I think, it, that's a little bit of the story that normal people who aren't you who you know don't tune into the streams and stuff they to like the live launches and all i think they need to be reminded a little bit of what the ultimate the ultimate idea not even goals just the ideas the things that we don't even know that we don't know yet i so, i have a friend who's a, who was a spacex initial investor and he's still but he's like no i don't the mars thing i think it's he's like i have a pr i don't believe it i think elon just and i'm like because he's a very successful wealthy person and he cannot conceive of why anybody would go to Mars. He's like, who would go to Mars? And I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, my like, dude, in your world, there is nobody on Mount Everest right now. There is nobody living in Antarctica. If everybody behaved the way you think people would behave, no, there are not people below the ocean in submarines traveling down there. You know, Richard Garriott did not go to the Challenger Deep. None of these people exist in your world. And he can't, he can't see why he would do it. And then I mean, look, and if we're gonna go back to our modern culture identity matters a lot like if you can dedicate yourself to something be it religion a family military like these are things for which people find solace because they can wake up every morning and go to sleep every night saying my life is lived in in the advancement of this thing are you telling me that there aren't going to be people within our lifetime for whom are living the lifestyle for a a, tr a trip to Mars for to be Mars colonists, a Mars colonist lifestyle on Earth, so they can be prepared to do it. I fully expect that to happen, and probably happen a lot sooner than any of us want to think about it. Yeah, like I, every when I try to make is like, don't don't go to Comic Con and ask people to raise their hand if they want to go to space because you're gonna get who knows. Go to you know a graduating class of students studying geology, you know, and biology, and people like this, people who are already signing up to go spend months and months on these research specials in the most inhospitable environments you can imagine. I dated a girl who's a geologist, and the most exciting thing in the world for her was to go to Antarctica and to get rocks. And I'm like, yeah, you're. You're in a you're in freezing temperature. You're in a little hut with a bunch of other people, but and then like yeah, but then I get to go out and I get to get these rocks, and I'm like, I don't understand. But those people exist and they're real, and they're the real reason it, cool things happen in our world. It, it I, th this is a dumb parallel, but it's like I can't stop thinking about um uh about how all of the data that we have. For 12 years of, of, of scam school, scam nation, Monorogue, everything is on some number of hard drives. And the only reason I'm able to sleep at night is because they, uh, they're, they're diversified and there's backups of everything. And even if it's not going to go anywhere, I regret nothing about this sound. I, I'm glad. It makes my point. Uh, I'm glad that 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 we continue to diversify and it seems like whether or not we ever establish a decent colony on Mars or the moon or what have you like the efforts to move in that direction are very important for 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 keeping the spirit of humanity alive and i think i i, yeah, I ima imagine that part of where some of the i don't know where where some of the uh 
I don't know, the feelings like against it are be- because, I mean, right now, I mean, the first people who go to Mars are not going to come back. They're they're right. I mean, they're gonna. Uh, this this was a point I mean, of contention in the past. I would I, encourage you to. I would, pro- but I would say for for most people, again, people who maybe do not know too too much about it, they may see this as a one a one way. No, trip. I, no, I think the, the plan, this is likely is, going to be a one way trip for for many many. Yeah. No. What? No. What? No. That's an update. No. The plan is the the plan like the whole thing that Musk is trying to do is. There's a reason they're building so many rockets, they're building so many engines, is the idea is that mm. they can keep going back and forth, and the idea that you don't make it a one-way trip, to make it sustainable is to let people go there and come back and to keep people bringing back and forth. I would, I don't think the first group, the definitely the first group of people won't be one-way. It's going to be return, and for a while, I think it'll be decades before people say, oh, I'm just going to go there and spend the rest of my time on Mars. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I, I guess my, my 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 point is not necessarily to to you are you are far more well versed in in plans. Uh, my suspicion is is simply just uh, you know, when people make a decision that they want to buy into something, many people get very invested, and in, and in that that's what they want their life's work to be. So, uh, yeah, I've been mean, like just, early on when we're. B- building a, when it's a research the line it's going to be research missions it's going to be research yeah. putting in, putting places on there building fuel depots things like this to have the capability to come back and the idea is you're going to have more rockets on mars capable of taking you back than rockets eventually carrying people to there so the return the idea is to absolutely make return a built-in part of it because we don't know how hard it would be we don't know how much of a hell hole be. we don't know what happens if all of a sudden you develop you know leukemia on mars what you do we don't know how to handle these things but why not the whole plan of Musk is like build in the ability to return. Like it's don't treat it like a one shot Apollo thing. Like we literally watched a rocket, a, a, a rocket with the three same, same booster engines they're going to be using to go to Mars. We watched one blow up last week. The next one is on the launch pad already. Yeah. Because I, he wants to keep his factory going. I, and, and uh, I, and factually like you're right. That, that sounds more right than my understanding a few minutes ago. Um, but is that, I, I guess it's a, it's part of the story, right? We haven't seen anyone come, go and come back yet, obviously, and that's going to be for a while. And, and I, I think just it, it's part of a, a public perception thing, right? If we're talking about what is the argument against going to Mars, I think a lot of that is something that you can win over with, with, with PR, with like reminding people, here's, here's the future. It's not going to immediately be, a, a one-way trek into the the endless void of space um and kind of beating against that image because because part of it is the image not it's not it's not all facts versus facts this is this is a certain amount i i i would or i would guess uh because that's, that's best i can do right now is that that is is probably what is fueling a lot of that that idea that we're talking yeah. against and for most of the Apollo program, it wasn't popular. The Apollo program, for most of the period of time, it was a considered a huge waste on the on national resources. It was considerably expensive, it was up to like 25% of the national budget. And people were like, why the moon? Why the moon? Why the moon? We did it. And we had a tremendous amount of national pride. And we felt great. And then a week later, we're like, why the moon again? <laughs> and so, you know, it's, it's, you can only go so far, but if you can build an economic model that makes sense, and I think that's a big part, but. I think, I mean, people in the comments have talked about like the moon and helium three. Like, I don't, there, if you really dig into, there's not really any resource there anywhere that's worthwhile bringing back. And we don't, you know, by the time we have the ability to exploit helium three, you'll be using deuterium fusion here or whatever. So you have to afford to figure out, you got to do it for other reasons, which could be bio, you know, could be biotech and other things. But so, but I'll give you an argument against like from the Mars as a hellhole. And and they, you know, they, they made the point like we should leave Mars to the microbes, which, to my knowledge, there are no microbes on Mars, but this author may have knowledge that we don't know. But there is the argument to be made, like, if we find life or we find things on Mars, should we, you know, should we go there and damage it or whatever? Should we colonize it and perhaps, you know, impact it? And there's an argument to be made about should we keep a preserve or pristine, et cetera. This, this is a version of the... Um... Uh, I don't know, the Garden of Eden argument, the idea that there is a perfect state of nature, uh, even if we don't understand it, the idea that however Mars is, is exactly how Mars is supposed to be. Um, 
And yes, you could probably find some very pretty formations. You could probably find some awesome crystalline, you know, tunnels or whatever. But but it's like, meanwhile, uh, as and maybe it's because I'm a magician or what have you, but it's like, unless there's an observer, I don't see any benefit to anything being pretty at all. Uh, so I say, I say right now, today, setting nanobots up and have them, you know, start, start making that our new apartment. Yeah. Cause you hear the, like, what gives us the right? And I'm like, well, nothing. And there's nothing that says we don't have the right. It works both ways. You can like, who are we to like, nobody, we, we just decide what we do. And maybe we sort of say, what's going to benefit the most amount of people the best. Maybe that's the best guy metric we have. And if we're like, yeah, no, going there will create, I, I think the wave of technological innovation that's going to happen from a space exploration is tremendous. And I'm surprised and sort of not surprised that people don't understand that, but there's never been a period of exploration, both technological and physical exploration, where we didn't just flourish with new developments and opportunities. The advantage we have here is there aren't people at the other end that we're going to exploit. Right. I mean, at, at most, the most generous version I can imagine is there's some slightly unique form of organic life that we will snuff out and corrupt by virtue of, of showing up. And eh, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> any of our fans who are not <laughs> the right types of life. Oh, Jesus. Well, I, I mean, like, listen, if you did, ah, oh, Brian. And it's like, well, don't use disinfectant in your bathroom. People like next yeah. time you use that tile cleaner, think about all the mold you're killing. It could have flourished. It could grow. Uh, I, I think, but yeah, I, I don't, I, I didn't like we talked about before when Mars perseverance, there are people like why Mars. And there are people who are critical on Twitter about doing this. And I, and I, all of my people I know who are science communicators, like, Oh, these dumbs are upset about this. I'm like, no, like these people have a right, a right to ask. It's a right to say why I think that they need to be open-minded than to be understand. Like, are you complaining about this? Cause you really have a problem with this specifically. And you've looked at all the other ways we waste money or you just don't get it or whatever. But I mean, it's a totally, totally fair to ask. It's totally fair to have an opinion about maybe we shouldn't. And, and, and I, you know, I believe, and I think we all believe here, like, oh no, we'll benefit earth by doing this, by finding technologies, new things. But other people, my argument is like, no, that's not the case. If you want to solve these problems here, then specifically spend the money and resources on this. And if you're in a position of power, like a Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk, then the moral thing to do is to stick, pick specific things and focus on them. But Hard for me to tell another human being what to do. That being said, that's an argument. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty clear in my opinion. Humans are a bacteria, a virus. Our job is to infect the rest of the solar system, then the galaxy, then all of, of as far as we Ryan know. Ryan is advocating for a meta existence to colonize our universe. Yes, 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 out. yes, yes. To the best of my understanding, we're super special. We are the precursor spe species that is meant by our mandate uh, uh, from nature to infect the rest of the universe. I And I'll give another argument to a moral argument that if there are people in the rest of the world that don't get to live in the lap of luxury that we do, and yeah. you could say, well, they could fix it. Like, no, sometimes you're stuck in a, in a, a power structure that's been around for hundreds or thousands of years where people, it's stratified, you don't have the power to change it because the people, some people own everything, you don't own anything. We're here in America because we found this continent that other people had found first, dot, dot, dot. Bad things happen, but because of the pressure in Europe and the lack of opportunity there, and we came here and we flourished. And there was a cost to be paid and a cost that's still being paid, and there was a downside because there are people here who suffered from this the upside is that there are now 350 million people living, you know, that the population of this is, you know, 20 times what it ever was here or so uh, in the, between the two continents. It's incredible. And I would say as far as the net positive benefits for the quality of life on the people and around the world overall have gone up tremendously by ways you can measure, by ways you can measure. And so whenever there's this opportunity for exploration, you create an opportunity for people who are stuck at other places to say, come here. To this day, there are people, there are large numbers of people trying to cross the border or successfully because of where they're from, the opportunities aren't there. And you could say, why don't we fix those? 
nobody knows how. Like, like I don't know how here in America to go fix a problem somewhere else. And but if you create new opportunities, new places for people to go, and you say, hey, if it sucks where you're at, you know, if if you're, you know, if if you live in an intolerant civilization, maybe you're 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 gay or you're different or whatever in a small town, you move to the big city where you're accepted. Let's create new vistas and new places where people can go. I agree. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Solved yeah. it. Sorry, aliens. Yeah. Uh, uh, Billy brings up the idea of colonizations become a dirty word. It's true. But like, you know, the first colonists, you know, in the Americas, where you know the first wave of you know people to move in you know move through the indigenous people to come here they came here there were animals here but there weren't people here and it was kind of a pretty successful colonization effort of the americas until some other people came to recolonize it and problems called but like we've the history humanity the history the real history the deeper history is we started off in africa and we followed some of the places where homo erectus neanderthal had been but then no places has never been and we found these entire places where there were no humans. There are other animals there, and sometimes we ate them, but that was an extremely successful thing. We made it onto every continent except for Antarctica until quite recently, but like that was an amazing success, and it's why we've succeeded so long. Why stop that? Nailed it. Solved yeah. it. You're welcome, Boom. Mars. Hey, Brian. Yeah. Justin. Yeah. Bryce, yep. you, you guys, yep. guys want to take, take some drugs? Hells yeah. Wait, sure. drugs? Oh, yeah. uh, even better, yes. Into it. So uh, I know what you're thinking. You're like, uh, I want to take some drugs, but like, I want to make sure I get my full hit, right? Yeah. You can't that's not what take I a full often, hit. That's what I often say to make sure that everyone's cool. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. I'm not, yeah. I'm not a cop. The first thing nope. I say, I'm not a cop. Mm -mm. You guys want to take a full hit of the smack. Yep, smack, yes. smack my pops yes. up. Yes. Take it yeah. from somebody who's proud of his law enforcement family. When he offers yeah. you to take a full hit of hit. Smack, smack, just make sure to just blindly agree, yeah. yes, officer. I mean, my friend Andrew, yes. give me a full I'm hit cool. of Smack. Everybody, I'm cool. We I'm know cool. you're cool, man. You're so cool that I want to do Absolutely. Smack with you. A full How about hit that new Snow smack. album, eh? Right? Yes, huh? Informer. Informer. Pretty Wait. awesome. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, boom, boom, Wait, down. long song. Yeah. Uh, so uh, there's an LA startup which is working on something really cool though, because one of the problems when let's say let's say you have cancer, right? And the way you treat cancer is you take drugs to try to kill the cancer, but yeah. you have to take a lot of drugs because even though the cancer might be in one small part of your body, the drugs kind of go wherever which kind of makes affects your whole body, makes you kind of sick. Ideally, you just want to deliver the drugs right to the cancer. Yeah. So this company is working on a little kind of, they call it a microscopic robot. And basically what it is, it's a little delivery system that you can inject into somebody's body and you use magnets to control it and steer it to the location that it needs to be where it can then deliver the drugs to where it needs to be specifically. So the idea is you could use much, much smaller doses of things like when you're trying to, you know, when you're trying to treat cancer and stuff like that stuff is, it takes a toll on the body. And it's why some people are hesitant to use those treatments. And we're looking at a photo here. You guys oh. want to describe it? Yeah, we're looking at like, a, um, imagine, imagine, I don't know. Uh, a the, penny, the, the smallest uh, currency in okay, America. What? Yes, today. that's the part that's easy to imagine. The hard part <laughs> is 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 like imagine um, a, a Boy Scout knife just barely shaving off in a twirly squirrel. Uh, 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 what one one percent less than one percent of a penny? Oh, not even. Yeah, yeah. Like, like I would say, yeah. Imagine sub, sub one percent, a sub one percent twirly squirrel. It looks like a little. Imagine if you know the Kongs, those little those little dog toys that you can put food in. It's yes. like one of those, but it's about half as tall as a penny is wide. Or, uh, yeah. So think th about think think about one of the letters on the penny, like where it says one cent. Imagine just the 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 top, the part of the the bar that forms the T and cent. It's like that long. Yeah. But like kind of like the end of a screw. 
But like we're all agreed, it's very small. That's the important part. <laughs> it's small. It's yeah. so it's damn small. small. It's very small. It's a very very small thing. No, that's 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 insane. I mean, talk about a revolution of 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 medicine and and even just our idea of of cancer treatment because cancer treatment is something that is has has come such a long way even in my lifetime in terms of a, a, a chemotherapy and treatment. Obviously, it's it's still something that is you know far too deadly and is is uh, a you know a, a massive problem that needs to be solved in in fullness but in terms of the idea of oh i have cancer i'm gonna have to go through chemo that used to be something that would shut you down when i was a kid for months if not years if it was persistent and now it's it's kind of you know it's it's something to do like and and this would be a, another step forward on that. So kind of a cool part about this is there are the two founders for the company had basically they worked on they were it's uh Michael Spiegelmacher and Aviad Mazels. They worked on a little company called Prime Sense. With any of you have an iPhone with the front facing face tracking system, which went first, that was the technology that went into connect and then Apple bought prime since that company and uses that technology now in the iPhone for measuring your face and doing three dimensional mapping of their face. After their company got acquired, they decided what do we do next? And they got very interested in doing things with biosensing or basically technology and how could you do precise delivery? They, uh, worked with a, a leading researcher who'd done some, you know, uh, uh, good research into the whole the field of trying to precise, precise, precisely deliver drugs. And so you have a really great technical background working with some really great medical people. And sort of that's that's exciting to see is you got people who've delivered a really amazing technology before and now trying to work on this. So would, would, would I be correct in my understanding where it's like just as um, uh, uh, radiation therapy is is essentially designed to, to point a, a, a radiation beam at a certain spot that is that is very active with cancer cells make things unpleasant for the cancer cells uh and then hopefully the healthier cells uh, uh revive and and live thrive and survive um this would be we would physically maneuver a, a screw-like jeep job over to that area to do the same thing yeah, and Bryce just highlighted a paragraph where they're what they're trying to start uh, working towards first, which is uh, brainstem gliomas. Because the problem there is, is if you try to use forms of like radiation or particle beam therapies on there, the tissue there is super delicate, and also there's the blood brain barrier, which is you know your brain to prevent it from like getting infected by a number of things. There's this barrier that keeps certain things from going into there, and basically it's very hard to put things in your brain unless it's it's the permeability, the right shape. So the idea is using this to treat very, very hard to treat, starting with a very hard to treat disease first to see if you can deliver drugs in a targeted way. So how soon do we get to declare victory? Question mark. Well, they plan on starting human trials in, I think, 20, if I remember correctly, like, mm, uh, 20, 24 or something. I it's don't know. Like clinical trials by 2023. 23. Well, they're already a year ahead of schedule guys. <laughs> yeah. Nailed it. I mean, and that's the thing is stuff like this. I mean, geez, we, um, you know, we, we, we watch the speed in which a, you know, the, the vaccines for COVID, which went at the fastest possible, like breakneck, never before seen speed through uh, 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 FDA approval. And that took what, eight months, nine months, you know? Uh, uh, so for, for something that is kind of experimental like this, it's definitely going to, it's going to, it's going to take, going to take a while. Well, we'll see. And yeah, it is like the, and not just the fact that we came up with a vaccine, that we came up with an RNA vaccine. That was really the the fact that yeah, we've now, them. yeah, we're we're now probably maybe ten years ahead 
of where we would have been on a natural course as far as our ability to treat uh, certain infectious diseases now. And it won't be fully realized for like a year or so when you start to see this, but the, the technology that we've come up with, the innovations we have there, you know, literally it was, you know, we're probably you know, several, half a decade to 10 years ahead of where we probably would have been on a different timeline. Um, yeah. What will happen with this, like we'll see if in, if in two years when they're doing trials on this, if they're seeing dramatic effects, we'll see if this, if, if this ability is to target can really work really well. We'll probably be seeing widespread application with a few years. And, you know, we've the, the war against cancer is uh, a painful one. And, you know, there's uh, but it's a one we're slowly been winning. You know, you look at the rate, you know, the, our improvement, your, your success, success, your survival rates, whatever with cancer have been getting better and better. It's still not much comfort for somebody who's dealing with cancer or dealing with one that's really hard to treat. You can say, well, this other one's fine. It's like, well, F you, I don't have that. Or my treatment's not responding, but we have been making progress and things like this could really leapfrog and help things considerably. Yeah. Good news. Hopefully. Hell yeah. Gentlemen, let's do some picks. Dude, I finally watched all of Real Steel. It's cute. That's another show that was better than it needed to be. It was great. Uh, it was fun to see the Falcon bump into Wolverine. Uh, and, and the two of them act like they didn't even recognize each other. I loved it. <laughs> uh real steel man yeah that was a, a a movie that punched above its weight uh and and uh, uh wasp too right isn't evangeline Lilly? oh that's in, right in yeah. Steel? yeah yeah you're right uh but yeah i i uh i i i really liked it i mean especially because i think this is pre-creed like sports movies have been it's been a weird decade for sports movies um you know, you, I think that the the most highly recognized ones were very, like we leaned heavily into the inspirational, the very special sports story. Those were like, you know, remember the Titans and and stuff like that. Uh, but this was, I remember seeing it in theaters and just being like, that's just a flick that gets why like, like why boxing rules. And let's build a movie and a story based on why boxing rules and then take it to the 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 biggest level with the with 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 the robots and everything. But it's like that's what an awesome sports movie does is just it's about a game, wrap your story around why the game is naturally fascinating, and then take it to the 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 millionth degree. And that's what I loved I loved about Real Steel. Uh it my mild spoiler like 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 it it does borrow some of the thematic storytelling arcs of straight up rocky where it's like if if you're familiar with rocky very familiar ending like like uh it, it it's not all about winning it's about doing very well and the best you can i yeah, I, I liked it. I had a little, when I'm watching it in the theater the first time, I kind of had an expectation about the robot getting sentience and some other ways it could have gone. But once you accept that that's not going to happen and you go rewatch it, it's a lot of fun. And also uh, what's cool is, you know, the story, the basic story was another Richard Matheson story. And Richard Matheson is one of the most influential genre writers of the 20th century who doesn't get enough credit when you start to look at all the Richard Matheson. I am like Richard Matheson story. You know, Incredible Shrinking Man was a Richard Matheson story, which influenced a lot of other things. And you start going down the list of uh, what dreams may come and all of these sort of properties that he attached to, you know, the Twilight Zone, like I think Terror 20,000 Feet, that was him. And just a real amazing legacy, but he's not a name that most people think of, you know, they, you are aware of, and then you just start to look at what he's influenced. Those incredible. So oh, big Matheson fan here. Um, I, well, I mean, so I really, I mean, WandaVision is, was kind of the big, the big thing that happened over the weekend. And uh, I very much enjoyed it. But the other thing that we were really, uh, that we're we're burning through now is Cobra Kai for the first time, my wife and I. And I'm very much enjoying Cobra Kai. I think that it's a good show. It's uh uh you know, I think it's it is it is at its best 
when it is an examination of the culture clash between the eighties and our modern world. And, and I, I very much enjoy the fact that it is, uh, it, 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 it does not shy away from diving into the tropes of, of, uh, you know, the, the karate kid movies, uh, and also big, big, big shout out to the fact that I think I was talking to Andrew about this and, and it was, I think it was his line, the idea that everybody in that element, that, that area of Los Angeles just understands the all Valley under 18 karate tournament to just be the Olympics. It's just like, <laughs> like just unabashed. Everybody's just like, Oh no, like the hunger games happens every year. It's like that level of significance for all these people that the under 18 all Valley karate tournament happens once a year is it, just amazing. And it, 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 it's funny. Cause later on, there'll be a much later episode where there's like a city commission meeting and it comes up where they're, they're like, they like the what? And it's like this yeah. sort of the idea that like, <laughs> Uh, it's only important to people it's important to. Uh, by the way, uh, back in Real Steel, Hope Davis was in there too. Who? Maria Stark. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So, yeah. So I was looking, I'm like, I know there was somebody else from there. I was dying to be like, who else was in there from like, you know, that's like, that's going to be six degrees of bacon. It's going to be like, six, you know, two degrees of MCU. Yeah. Bryce, you have a pick? Uh, I got a pick. Um, I'll have the link to this in the in the show notes because it may be a little tough to find. But over the weekend, over the weekend, a lot of stuff was happening. I uh, I I think I had a really good moment online over the weekend. I uh, uh, there's there's a streamer that I watch on Twitch and he does video games. He's he's a, he's funny and it's he's kind of the kind of person who just is funny on his own and so he works really well on Twitch. Um, but the other thing I really like about him is that he has a lot of showmanship. He will often do like kind of these big ideas for things. And so I I just saw on my phone pop up, oh, uh Germa Germa985 is his, his name, uh has gone live with the archaeology stream. And I open up on Twitch and he is out in the Nevada desert uh with a shovel, uh uh and like a camera crew out doing stuff. And okay, that's kind of uh, that's that's all right. What are you doing there? So then, uh, a few minutes pass, and he brings out like a, you hear a backhoe pulling the the you know the beep beep pulling up, and he like has a little backhoe digging stuff up. Uh, <laughs> he ends up finding um, a chest, a hidden treasure chest in the ground. <laughs> he comes back and like he's got this whole story of like. The, 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 this this is a chest of like 90s ah! <laughs> goodies from his grandfather i think which is all like a conceit to uh look at these playing cards i guess he's gonna be doing these playing card things i, I don't really know that uh justin that... what does the internet smell effort yeah um, effort and so and so that was fun right and he's looking at cards and that's kind of a fun thing for a little while and so he says oh man and you know we found all these other rocks too so they go back to break they go to break and they come back and they have an actual geologist and a bunch of geodes and they then he just spends like an hour and a half cracking open geodes with an actual geologist and there are some of these where there's kind of fake like i think this is actually one of them where he cracks it open and inside is a little a little plastic bubble with a uh, Minecraft diamonds in it. That's amazing. <laughs> and he's like actually talking with the geologist and learning about quartz and minerals and stuff. It was, it was awesome. I thought I was, I was getting down. I was, I was, uh, you know, getting in for a bath. I thought, oh, okay, he's going live. Maybe I'll just watch him play a game while I'm, you know, I, while I get cleaned up. And I just, I was, I was enraptured. In, in I couldn't, I couldn't leave. I didn't want to like miss any of you this. You couldn't, couldn't leave the bathtub, Bryce, if I recall what you just said correctly. Uh, yeah i okay i i what's wrong with a man being stuck in the bathtub I'm, I, presidents yeah. have gotten stuck in the bathtub <laughs> i didn't want to be stuck like i don't know i <laughs> wanted to, i was i was enraptured i was having a good time i was relaxing i just got off of work anyway um, i no, no i went to a friend's house once and i walked in i was walked in i'm like hey what's up and i look and i see this mirror propped in a doorway and and I go walk to the mirror and I look and I see, I go look and I see the bathtub and I turn around and I look and I see the TV. 
and this is like this is like 90s i'm like yeah do you like just sit there and watch the tv through the mirror he's like yeah i'm like if you get if you okay. get the oh, sound, i mean now we got ipad so just now it's decided yeah. to take the ipad in there no ashley ashley i i I got her. She got herself. I forget where it came from, but uh, uh, a whole little kit that just sits on top of the bathtub, like so she could just have her iPad and her glass of wine there uh, <laughs> the entire time. And, and mm. I guess we, we might need a bigger one because we're gonna have a bigger bathtub soon. But uh, yeah, no, that's that is definitely soakers are a thing, man. There, there are there are they're out there. Sometimes these, you just want to soak. Soakers. You yeah. just want to soak a little bit. I, 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 I've yeah. known from time to time. I'm not judging. Um, I, I, won't, leisures. I won't spoil the end of the stream, but um, uh, there's there's a great bit right at the very end of it as well that is just all. I spent my whole time thinking like, okay, how would he set this up? Is this live? It's definitely edited as live, but they like the signal's very good for being out in the middle of the desert, and then there's definitely parts that were clearly pre-prepared i mean they fi he finds this fake treasure chest in the desert so obviously there's some about it but i don't know it was just, it was a lot of fun and it was the kind of thing where it was out of nowhere and i was i was live tweeting a little bit about it because i i mean i followed this guy and i didn't even know what was happening and yeah. uh it was it was it was really cool it was it was a moment where i was like yeah this is a great thing so for twitch was he was he responding to the chat at all? Like, or, or was it plausibly pre-recorded? He had a couple of moments where he was like, "Oh, what does the chat say?" And he would say something that seemed like it would be the thing that the chat was saying, but he, he didn't spend too too long on it. Um, yeah. So I I, I I I I yeah I do think that sounds like the equivalent of us saying like, uh, "What's the chat saying?" Oh, Kuhan, and yeah, then that I, and then move on. Basically, <laughs> like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but it and it was it was really wholesome. I mean, he was like doing jokes a little bit but he was just so excited to crack open geodes and i was excited to watch it they look cool geodes look great. cool dude so wait, how long how long did it go how long was the stream uh about two and a quarter hours here what i've got the, the link yeah. uh in the show notes so you can all find the video archive on uh, on youtube but that's that is a great 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 thing where like especially if he's looking to launch uh, like a, a a kickstarter or a product or something like that a game um the idea that he did a did an event, didn't oversell it. It came out of nowhere, right? So now you're rewarding people for being there. You obviously spent a ton of time there. Uh, you you get to a bit, that's done, and then you spend the another back end hour, literally, basically just doing you know nature's version of an unboxing. Like uh, <laughs> that's that's. So smart, very yeah. very smart. It was it was a lot of fun. So nice. Yeah, Andrew, you got a pick. My pick is I have become a little bit obsessed. Uh, I'm a grown man, but I apparently like to have other grown men explain comic books to me. And I mentioned before uh, comics Drake, which was another comics channel where he does a lot of explaining. And now there's comics, comic books explained or comics explained, which is another guy who like. Right now, he's got this two-hour master cut of explaining the 1980s Secret Wars. And yeah. this is a guy who has an enthusiasm. And I read that series, but, like, listen to this guy, like, describe it. It's great. So I'm a big fan of that. Like, if I'm just chilling out, like, have some dude explain to me about some comic book run or some comic. And that was, like, as a kid, that's kind of, like, I got more out of comic books by having my friends explain them to me than yeah. I did sometimes reading it. So that's going to be the new Twitch. It's going to be a new genre. It's just going to be a channel of people explaining stuff to you. I'm, uh, I, 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 I'm not entirely sure oh, whether or not right there. that's a joke who, who, because who, like, otherwise like wait. I'm like, I'll, I'm all in. Pause. go back there. Who's that up in the upper left? Uh, Hawkeye. It, who's that Galactus? It's no, who's back is to us. Oh, oh. uh, is that? Oh, Photon. So, Silver Surfer. Monica Rambo. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Who I read, did not remember until the <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, cool. I guess she's going to be a superhero. And I'm like, oh, and when I was a kid, she wasn't called Photon. She had another name. She was Captain Marvel back then. Yeah. But like, anyhow. Yeah. So, um, cool. But pay attention, kids, to the Marvel Universe. You know, I'm watching this little underground show nobody heard about that, uh, yeah. you know. <laughs> which I thought was delightful and I was very happy the way it ended. I loved it. 
Loved it. 10 out of yeah. 10. I, there was the, I had this like in it. I'm like, uh, I'm like, you know, one thing would make me feel better. In credit, final credit. Ah, cool. That one thing that make me feel better. Now I'm cool. Gentlemen, it's been weird. All right. So I know normally this is where we do after things, but uh, I'm almost certain that we're it's actively very loud. hindering Yeah, I don't mind. I got a thing I can go okay. do. All right. Okay. All right. Cool. If, if, if we're all cool with it, yeah. Sure. All right. Well, thank you to everybody yeah. who uh, tuned in. We'll be back, I'm assuming, in a couple hours for Cord Killers. Yes. Uh, we got Grant Davis from the MCU pod and the Beerus. He'll be on. That'd be, be fun, great. Fun time. Uh, Justin R. Young on Twitch, Andrew Main on Twitter, all the good mm -hmm. stuff. Thank you, everybody. XOXO, love you. Hold this me. Hold this me. Hold this me. Motherfucker, stop pretending. Stop pretending. Stop pretending. Stop pretending. You're not as cold as me. Click, hold this me. Click, hold this me. Click, hold this me. Motherfucker, stop pretending.